Something you want to tell me about? Yes. Um, I would like to talk to you about a equation that is called Fitt's Law and how that affects the way that you point at things and use a cursor on your computer. Fitz, like Fitzes or Fitz or fi like Well, it's Fitzes, but that sounds funny. So I'm just going to say Fitz. But know that I know that there are two S's in there, okay? It belongs to Paul Fitz, who was a researcher in um, 1954 who was trying to work out how we could predict the speed of people's movements from one location to another. Um, and what he was doing, he was trying to work this out from a kind of perspective of how we can um, make production lines more efficient, where people are putting pieces together. But what he didn't realise then at the time was that it really, really is um, useful when talking about how people move things on a computer screen, how people move a mouse cursor on a computer screen. And the result of this formula means that we can predict how quickly you can move between one target and another um, depending on a few variables. What are we talking about here? A target is anything that you might want to, to click on on the computer screen. So you want to go to a menu item, you want to close a window, you want to highlight some text. Any situation in where you're moving your cursor to another location on screen, that's what I'm calling a target here. I'll write down the, f the formula for you and then we can talk about which elements of it matter and which things um, you can choose to change as a designer and how you can use this formula to optimise the um, layout, the user interface of something on a computer screen. So the equation is the time it takes you to move from your location to a target is equal to A plus B times log base 2 of amplitude over width plus 1. The variables within this equation. We have A and B here. We can kind of ignore those. So A and B just mean that you can adapt this equation depending on what people are actually using to do the pointing. So if, for example, they were using a stylus, you might need to make it take a bit longer than if they were using a mouse or something like that. So A and B are kind of used for that. There's like little dials you can tweak for. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what they do. So we can kind of ignore those. What we're interested in here are the variables A and W, amplitude and width. And these things describe the target. So the amplitude describes how far away the target is from your start position and the width describes the width of the target, unsurprisingly. How big the target is. Exactly, how yes. Big, how big a landing pad you've got. Exactly. So the width gives you an idea about exactly how accurate you need to be when you get to that target. The wider something is, the less accurate you need to be. And the way that we use this formula is that we want to minimise the amount of time that someone takes. And so we want to minimise this term. And to do that, we can do two things as designers. Firstly, we can make this value, the A, amplitude small, which means we can make the target closer. Or we can make W, the width, large, so we can make the target massive. This seems pretty obvious, doesn't it? Like, it does seem obvious. It actually reminds me of sport as well, like anything in sport, like darts. You either have a big bullseye or you stand closer to the dartboard. <laughs> yeah, it, well, it is quite obvious. But the interesting thing is that we have an actual equation to describe it. It's not just something that we can intuitively work out. It's something that has been tested really, really thoroughly to get, to get some equations out of it. The way that Fitz tested it is he got people to hold a stylus and then move quickly back and forth between two targets. And he altered the distance of those targets away from each other and the width of those targets. And he came out with this wonderful formula to, to actually accurately describe it. Now, let's actually think about what this means for, for design and actually what we can do with this formula in order to make really useful interfaces and really quick to use interfaces. So, um, thinking about amplitude, the way that we can minimise this, that is the distance, we want to minimise it, is to give people things exactly at their cursor point. So the closest pixel to you is the one where your cursor is. And so that's why you get quite a lot of useful functionality at the cursor point. That is, you right click, 
You don't need to make any movement whatsoever. And so that is a target that's really, really easy to get to. This is the menu that pops up next to the thing. When exactly, you like it. a tooltip menu. And that means that you can put all of the very useful functionality right there because it's incredibly easy for the user to get to. Because that's... wherever you happen to be, you right click and up Exactly, it pops. exactly. Wherever you are is exactly where that menu is. So that's one way of doing it. That's, I don't think that's that interesting. Now, if we think about width, this is the really interesting part to me. Where do you think the best place is to click on a, on a screen? What's the, what's the easiest place to get to on a screen? The edges, I guess, because you can't miss the edge. That's exactly it, I say. So if you put a target in the corners of the screen, what you have essentially done there is created a target that is infinitely wide, right? You've, you've made it so that no matter how far up and how far right they go, the user will always be on that target. And that's why the corners are such useful areas on a computer screen, because they are infinitely wide, which makes this equation get a lot smaller, and so it means you can get to those corner areas really, really quickly. It's interesting because I think some people were upset with Apple because the X at the top right on some interfaces, that really is wedged right into the top, and so therefore it is infinitely big. But then I think Apple brought it down and made it into a circle, so they moved the target from being infinitely massive to a tiny little circle just by bringing in like a couple of pixels from the edge which is kind of silly of them, but it's interesting that you can do that. Is the FITS equation, do you imagine this is something that in the halls of Microsoft and Apple and game designers and that they're always thinking about, or is this something that academics like you look at afterwards and smugly say, well, they should have done this, or the real reason <laughs> they did it is because of this, or do you think they apply this equation? No, I, I, I do genuinely believe this is something that's that people are very much considering when they're designing things. Um, there are loads of different variations of it. So um, for obviously now we're starting to move to like touch screens and so things get a bit get, get a bit more different because um, the corners of your iPad are definitely not the best place to put things because there's no such thing as this infinite width and height. And so the equations are having to change and alter depending on the new technology that is coming out. But it is definitely still being it's definitely still being used by people in order to justify and come up with clever ideas for interfaces. We'd like to thank Audible.com for this episode of Computer File. And if you're not aware of Audible, do check them out. They've got audiobooks online. They've got thousands to choose from. And if you go to audible.com slash computer file, there's a chance to download one for free. Now, today I'd like to recommend this book about Elon Musk. He's one of the co-founders of Google, and it's called Tesla, SpaceX, and the quest for the fantastic future. I think I've got that right. Hopefully, it'll be here on the screen by now. So he's billed as a real-life Tony Stark, you know, the guy behind Iron Man. So get over to audible.com slash computerfile, download your free book, and thanks once again to them for sponsoring this Computerfile video. They're not testing the actual machines yet. What they're doing in this paper is giving people a booklet that just has this on it. When people filled this in, 55% of people chose the phone layout. 55% of people went, well, obviously it should go like this.